and welcome to today's lesson on thermistors and LDRs. In today's lesson, we're going to try and understand how semiconductors work. Now, today's lesson fits into the GCSE separate science physics and the GCSE combined science physics in the electricity module on paper one. So we're going to try and define what a semiconductor is. We're going to try and understand how a semiconductor resistance can change with both temperature and light intensity and look to see what experimental data would look like when we compare the semiconductors changing resistance with either light intensity or temperature, which links into the following part of the AQA GCSE separate and combined science qualifications for physics. So you need to look at both a thermistor and an LDR and how their resistances can change with the conditions of the surroundings. So before we really get into what a semiconductor is, we've got to recap and understand what we mean by resistance. Now, when electrons flow through a material in the form of a current, they will collide with the metal ions of the conductor which they're traveling through. Now, these collisions will cause vibrations which will in turn produce heat, which is what we observe as resistance. So as charge flows through a conductor, it'll collide with the ions of the conductor. These collisions will cause energy to be dissipated from the kinetic energy store of the electrons to the internal energy store of the surroundings, which we would observe as heat. The wire would get hotter. So fundamentally, the efficiency of the circuit has decreased because we don't actually want energy to be dissipating to the internal energies of the surroundings. So therefore, it's not as efficient as it would be without these collisions. So fundamentally, before we move on, the electrons, as they travel through the wire or the conductor, they'll knock into the metal ions which make up the conductor or the wire. They'll slow down. That's resistance, which in turn lowers the current, the rate of flow of charge. Now, the higher the temperature, the greater the amplitude of vibration of those met of those conductor ions so there's going to be more collisions with the electrons as they travel through the conductor so the resistance would get higher and also if they have the lower temperature of your conductor the ions of the conductor would not vibrate as much they have a lower amplitude of vibration so therefore there be fewer collisions with the electrons as they pass through the conductor so you get a lower resistance so previously when we've looked at things such as conductors like resistors and bulbs we found that when the temperature increases the metal ions of the conductor vibrate with a greater amplitude so there's more collisions between the ions and the electrons so it increases the resistance. So for things like resistors and bulbs, when the temperature increases, the resistance increases. But not all materials are conductors. We can also get semiconductors. Now, semiconductors include thermistors, which is a component where, whose resistance changes with temperature. And we can symbolize it with the following circuit diagram symbol. Another example of a semiconductor is an LDR, or a light-dependent resistor. This is a semiconductor component which has its resistance changing with light intensity, which we symbolize with the following circuit diagram symbol. Now, on the particle level, uh, you know a conductor is a material with lots and lots and lots of free electrons in its structure. These are electrons which are able to move about freely in the material so it can carry a current. Now, technically, a conductor is a material with enough free electrons to produce a current when a potential difference is placed across it. Now, an insulator is a material with very, very few free electrons in its structure. Now, in theory, a perfect insulator has no free electrons whatsoever. But we've never actually observed this in the universe so far. But the technical definition of an insulator is it's a material which doesn't have enough free electrons to produce a current when a potential difference is placed across it. Now, a semiconductor is a material with a reasonable amount of free electrons in its structure, but more importantly than that, you can change how many free electrons there are in its structure by placing work into the semiconductor or out of 
the semiconductor. We can put energy into the semiconductor, put and work in, or we can take energy out of the semiconductor, do work out of the semiconductor. So let's consider the thermistor. Now the thermistor is a semiconductor and it's a store of electrons. Now not all of these electrons are free electrons, but you can make them free electrons if you put work into the semiconductor so they've got enough energy to be released out of the structure of the thermistor and travel in the circuit. So in a thermistor, when the temperature increases, energy is put in to the thermistor so there are more free electrons which are liberated which are released from its structure which increases the current in your circuit and decreases the resistance so the increased temperature allows energy to be put into the thermistor which allows more of the electrons in the thermistor to be free and move in a current so the higher the temperature the more electrons released from the thermistor, the lower the resistance of your circuit. Because the electrons join the other electrons in the metal wire to give a higher current. So basically, in a thermistor, the higher the temperature, the more free electrons released by the thermistor, because those electrons have been given energy to be released from the thermistor, which increases the current and decreases the resistance. So when you have a higher temperature, the increased number of electrons comes from the store in the thermistor. So when work is done on the thermistor, more electrons become free. They get released from the metal ions in the thermistor, go become part of the circuit, and there's a greater current and a lower resistance. Now this effect is also noticed for an LDR. But the energy in this example, the work, is not provided by thermal energy, rather radiant energy electromagnetic radiation, light. So in an LDR, the higher the light intensity, the more energy received by the LDR, the more free electrons released by the LDR, so it increases the current in the circuit and decreases the resistance. So just to compare and contrast the two. So in a conductor, when the temperature increases, the metal ions vibrate with a greater amplitude, so there's more collisions between the ions and the electrons, that will increase the resistance, and when temperature increases, resistance increases. But in a semiconductor, when temperature increases, the electrons gain more energy and become free from the nucleus. So there are more free electrons in the circuit, which decreases the resistance because there's a greater current. So in the semiconductor, when the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. Now, if we look at some experimental data to prove this, when we plot the resistance of a thermistor and the circuit it is in against its temperature, you get the following graph. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this graph is it's not linear. It's not a straight line. It's not a, a directly proportional relationship. Okay, so it is not a linear. It is more curved. Now, you'll also notice when you've got a low temperature, there's little work being done to the thermistor, so there are fewer free electrons in the circuit, so you've got a higher resistance. But when you've got a high temperature, there's lots of work done to the thermistor, there's many free electrons now in the circuit, the resistance is a lot lower. So you've got to remember this relationship that the resistance of the thermistor decreases as the temperature increases. Whilst for an LDR, it's the same pattern, it's the same trend, but now on our x-axis, it's no longer temperature, it is light intensity. So at a low light intensity, little work is done to the LDR, there's few free electrons and a high resistance. But at a high light intensity, there's lots of work being done to the LDR, lots of energy going into it, so there's many free electrons in the circuit and you've got a low resistance. So as the resistance of an an LDR decreases, okay, the light intensity would increase. So those are the two relationships you've got to be aware of. So just to summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. A semiconductor is a material which can vary the number of free electrons it has in its structure and in the electrical circuit it's in. Semiconductors can include light-dependent resistors or LDRs and thermistors. Now the resistance of a thermistor, the resistance of a thermistor decreases as the temperature increases and the resistance of an LDR decreases as light intensity increases. These, these relationships occur as when work is done into a semiconductor, it will release more free electrons from its structure, 
increase in the current in the circuit and therefore decrease in the resistance. So, to summarise, we should hopefully be able to define what a semiconductor is. Understand how a semiconductor's resistance changes with temperature and light intensity now. And then finally, we can analyse experimental data to prove this. I hope you've enjoyed this particular lesson. Okay, thank you very much for listening.